Today, I'm excited to look at a code walkthrough comparing two ways of implementing a link prediction pipeline in Neo4j's graph data science library. Specifically, we're going to conduct a side-by-side -side comparison of how to implement this pipeline in GDS 1.8 versus the all-new GDS 2.0 Python driver. And as we'll see, there's a lot to be excited about. So let's jump right in. So to start, I would encourage you to go over to GitHub and pip install the graph data science driver and take it for a spin. Um, and with that, we will jump right into the code. So to start is our setup. And you can see I've, I've delineated the 1.8 versus the uh, what we're doing in the driver in the headers above. So largely things are exactly the same, but there's a few differences. So what is the same is I'm still just declaring my URI and my credentials, as you can see here on the first two lines of each cell. But instead of instantiating a graph database driver object, I'm instantiating my GDS graph data science object. The other thing that I would previously do is implement my run cipher function. This was to abstract away the need for dealing with drivers and transactions and sessions so I could just run my cipher and get the results back easily. But you'll see we're not doing that here because that is natively embedded into the graph data science driver. And with that said, we don't even need to use that functionality because we won't be running any cipher with the driver. We're gonna be working directly with the underlying objects and abstractions. Um, so no need for any cipher on the driver's part. So I'm gonna start by creating my link prediction pipeline, uh, which you can see here and here, which is largely the same syntax, which is actually a benefit because if you're already familiar with the graph data science library, you know there's a pattern to how you call certain functions and that is already embedded in the library and in the driver. So all of those will line up the same if you're used to kind of the order in which you call functions, that is the exact same order that you'll call them in the driver. Uh, we can see a couple differences, like the fact that our link prediction pipeline has been upgraded to beta, which is great. Next, we're going to look at adding our embeddings to our link prediction pipeline. And you can see a lot of the structure is exactly the same. We're calling the same arguments in largely the same way, except we no longer need to specify things like which pipeline we're going to add our embeddings to because we're calling it directly on our pipe object. So we don't need to make, we don't need to specify those kinds of things because we're using the underlying objects and calling the function on them directly. Next, let's look at how we could use the dynamics of Python and combine that with implementing things in the graph data science library. So here I'm adding page rank and betweenness as I've done in previous videos. Uh, but instead in the driver version, I'm going to do that with two quick lines of code and of, with a simple for loop. So previously I would make these separate function calls via strings and then passing them to my run cipher function. Now I can just call a for loop and say pipe.add node property and they'll easily be added. Uh, and again, quick two lines of code, done. Next I'm gonna add my features to my pipeline. Again, largely the same code, not much difference here except for the fact that it's uh, a little less to type, and we're calling it directly on our pipeline object. That holds true for splitting between train and test as well. Where we can really start to see the convenience is in things like creating our projections. So one thing to note is that in 2.0, we have changed from the previous graph.create to what is now graph.project. And we can utilize this because it is much simpler for me to parameterize my arguments to my function. So here, I might want to change around what I want my projection to do or run different experiments with certain nodes or certain edges included or excluded. Now, the savvy amongst you will say, well, you could do that with the string uh, function call version, you know, by you know, using an F string or a dot format, but that produces its own set of uh, small challenges. So if I were to change this to an F string, we can now see that the curly brackets, which are a part of my cipher syntax, now become part of the f-string syntax and there's kind of a confusion between the two um, because it's actually trying to interpolate my uh, underlying cipher. So for this, I would actually have to come in here and add a second pair of curly brackets. And again, this isn't the end of the world, but it's one more thing I have to worry about and track and makes it a little harder when I'm trying to actually under use the underlying variables to switch things around. With the new version of the graph data science, driver, I don't need to necessarily worry about 
uh, in, you know, using the string interpolation to pass it variables, I can just instantiate the variables right here, declare my list, declare my dictionary, and then switch those around as I want to change an experiment and pass them to my function to create my embedding or my uh, projection. So next, let's look at training our link prediction model. And one of the things you can see right away is it's way less code. So here, it's taking me about eight lines of Cypher and three lines of Python. So again, here I'm having to declare things like which um, projection I want to use. In the, I have to actually specify the specific string, and I have to you know remember that or store it in some variable. Well, in the Python driver, I already have that stored as an object, G, I just pass that. Uh, and same thing goes for which pipeline. Again, I have to specify the specific pipeline I want in the old version, but now I just call it as a function from my pipeline object, making that even simpler. And as far as returning specific metrics and model info, I don't have to worry about that either because it already knows that that's what I want and, it and that's one of the things that it returns from my train function. So I get that automatically. And when it comes to streaming the results back, it's the same story, which is less code, simpler to do. So no need for all of my different cipher calls, no need to specify the string that refers to the projection I want or the specific pipeline model. I already have that stored here in my train pipeline model object. I've got my graph stored in my G object, and I can just stream my results back simply and easily. And even better, these are returned back in a pandas data frame. So if I want to then use these for some downstream task or uh, store them as a CSV or whatever that might be, that's super easy to do. It's in a standard Pythonic uh, object that I'm already familiar with as a data scientist. So go pip install the Python driver, take it for a spin, and be sure to share what you create with us. I look forward to seeing what you do.